Hi, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. Joining me right now is Milan Cam Coldcar. He is the Chief Digital and Data Officer for Celerity, which is some kind of crazy idea is, is what crazy, this guy keeps yeah. telling me. All right, so, so for everybody who, including myself, who has yeah. no idea what you're doing mm -hmm. these days, tell us about Celerity. All right, the short story is that we make medicines. We're a therapeutics company, okay. uh, part of flagship pioneering's portfolio, uh, venture number 49 in their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we basically make medicines that target cell behavior. Okay. Cell behavior. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, well, so that is a whole new form of biology. Um, the way we're looking at it is, you know, in the past, right, we've been very reductionist in terms of our approaches to understanding medicine and understanding targets and biology. So what I mean by that is uh, the analogy would be, imagine if you had a pebble and you threw it into a pond. Okay. A hundred percent of R&D has been focused on understanding the constitution of that pebble. Nothing else. Okay. Right? Now, that's great. I don't want to throw it under the bus because, you know what, we wouldn't have an industry otherwise right. if we didn't do that. But that's very useful for monogenic diseases and diseases where they are relatively understood. And if you see what we've seen today, PCSK9, P1, et cetera, all of these drugs, we tend to have industries that aggregate around one particular, my favorite gene, my favorite pathway, my favorite protein. We thought biology doesn't care about that. <laughs> okay. We, this is maybe a little more complicated, right? It's a little more complica complicated. We felt actually, and, and, and there's been some new technologies, right, that have come through. Mm -hmm. So single cell, uh, the understanding of single cell resolution data has really provided us an opportunity to truly understand the constitution of tissues okay. uh, based on its cellular makeup. <clears throat> now, we've done okay on pathways and things like that. We've come very far in that space, but we truly haven't understood the complexity of biology at a cell and tissue level. So what convinced me to join this company, I can okay. tell you after leaving Sanofi, which is a, which is a great job, uh, great role, what convinced me was when I sat down with the founders of the company, they said, Milland, we want to build a cellular time machine. I said, you want to what? A cellular time machine? Yeah. I kind of would have jumped in then too. I'd be like, say no yeah, more, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. I don't even know what that is, but I'm in. And then they're like, yeah. And I said, what, so you want me to build a flux capacitor for it then? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, my God. You know? So, you know, it was sci-fi. It is sci-fi because – so here's the difference, right? We all think about complex systems – uh, as complex, but our approach to understanding complexity is reductionist. Mm -hmm. We try and break things down into individual components. Keep in mind that is only one part of complex systems theory. Mm -hmm. There is another theory called emergence. Okay. Nobody's building algorithms for emergence. Right, in, back up. What's emergence? Um, well, emergence is looking at the entire picture. It's looking at the forest and the trees. Ah, okay. Right? All right. Today, in biology reductionist, we look at the constitution of the leaves on the trees, right? Okay. But we're saying, no, we look at everything get-go. And as a result of that, we're about 40 people now, funded by flagship, about 50 million Series A. We're super excited about where things are going right now. But what's most exciting is just the approach that we're taking. So we've completely deconstructed the organizational structure of R&D. And what I mean by that is R&D historically is very hierarchical and linear process-driven. Right? And you have two schools of thought today. You have either the knowledge-centric view, which is biology dictates the approach that you take. And so you have biologists that tell technologists to generate data. And then the, the, the data generation team hands over informatics responsibilities to quasi-data scientists sitting in a basement somewhere. That is pharma R&D, right? <laughs> that is biotech R&D too. Okay, lo and behold, you get AI coming through. Okay, and let me rephrase this, machine learning coming okay. through. And with machine learning coming through, you now have this big data-driven world and, you know, also, and, and honestly, I have friends on both sides of the fence. I'm a geneticist, but I've also done a lot of machine learning work in the past. I don't claim to be a machine learning scientist because there are far smarter people than me in that. You've been labeled as it, though. I've been labeled as it, though. But, you know, I'll, I'll take the humble thing. But I, I understand the business of machine learning. Yeah. That's what I do well. Mm -hmm. That is that is true. Uh, you know, so, <clears throat> um, so what we did is that we said, actually, you can enter into a clinical hypothesis either from a machine learn generated hypothesis, or you can do it from a biological, like the classic way, or you can do it from a data hypothesis. What does this data tell us about us? What questions can we ask of it? So when you do that, mm -hmm. you completely strip hierarchy, and there's a big difference in organizational structure. Let me tell you, it's the difference between multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. Okay. Multidisciplinary is getting three different teams mm -hmm. together, 
and hope to God they speak the same language, <laughs> right? Which yeah. we all know does mm-hmm. not happen. No. Interdisciplinary is when you have, like for example, my machine learning scientists spend time in lab. Mm. They actually do wet lab work. Oh, cool. And it's important for them to do wet lab work because they need to know why this data was generated and how it was de- generated yeah. so you can really use it properly. And we're going to let you into a little secret here. It's Ooh. got nothing to do with big data. We have built predictions of a little of data? Excel files. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just as powerful. And so when we started the company with the machine learning piece, my head of applied machine learning, Alex Wolf, came from a wonderful lab in Munich uh, under Fabian Thies. And Fabian's pretty much Angela Merkel's AI advisor. So he's a super smart guy. Yeah. But the claim to Alex in the world of single cell he is the author of the single cell analysis package used by hundreds of thousands of data scientists doing this work today. Okay. So it's nice to have the author on your team. I, yeah, I can't even <laughs> imagine. So how is this going to change the game for yeah. the entire industry moving yeah. forward? Is this is this this the the single cell beginning of the end for the old way of doing R and D for the old yeah. way of developing yeah. new therapeutics? I mean, like to t- paint the picture for me on the road you ahead because you and your time machine may be going backwards. So the rest of us are like, well, that one. <laughs> happens if he creates a parallel universe in another reality. Yeah, so. no, I'll, I'll tell you, like, what we're looking at is basically the way it's changing it is in three formats. Okay. Format number one, uh, taking the forest and trees approach. Look at everything first. So what we're building are predictions for outcomes, not predictions for targets. We can okay. always go deep into the target, mm-hmm. but we have more predictable compounds. What I find, the, I think the challenge that AI companies have right now is that they've kind of pigeonholed themselves into being just fast. Yeah. They haven't actually thought about being more predictable. Pharma cares about being predictable. Well, they de-risking. Want, they want to de-risk, yeah. right? Our approach is to de-risk that entire biology and chemistry simultaneously. Okay. Most people de-risk biology, then they'll de-risk chemistry, then they'll de-risk clinical, etc. We've completely hyper-paralyzed that process. So we're not an AI company. We are a therapeutics company. We make assets. We make medicines. That is okay. the value of our That company. was actually going to be my next question. It's like, yeah. what are you selling? The approach or are you selling the, the medicines that are going to come out of this approach? It, it's and the what are you working on? the medicines. Okay, so what are you working on? Can you talk about a, a little bit about some yeah, of the diseases that you're bit. targeting? Yeah, so, so it's all of them. Oh, it's all oh of them. hey, that's small. Yeah. Why not so, just start tiny? Well, <laughs> we, well, you know, we thought if, if you're going to re-architect it, why, like, you know, go small. Okay. If you're building something that's this powerful, go for it all and see if you can get things done. So we had close to 44 programs going on right now. We have compounds that we've found. We generate compounds, but we're also modality agnostic. So we can do CRISPR screens. We can do gene editing screens wow. as much as we can do small molecule screens. But the difference is like a big farm or big biotech that will find a target and then run millions of compounds. We only have to take the top five most predictable compounds that have toxicity profiles. We've analyzed their off-target effects. We've done a couple of stunts now where there are drugs that had unknown mechanisms of action. We have found them. Ooh. <laughs> right? And we found them by using this, these techniques. So okay. I think, you know, there's a lot of people that are doing maps of okay. the body. Mm-hmm. Right? Everyone's saying, oh, but we're building this map. And all that. I'm like, well, you know, maps is so Christopher Columbus, right? Because you, you need to create navigational tools, not just maps. Maps yeah. are simply a format under which you can just see what the world looks like. But if you don't know how to get from A to B or you don't have the vehicle to get there, do you walk, do you train, do you fly? You can't actually impact disease or health. We have figured out those. And we're doing this at such a scale. When we started first the work, it used to take one of our data scientists about three months to do the analysis. It takes us three hours now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So it, from your yeah. perspective, I mean, then, so what's, I mean, it, it's both revolutionary in terms of scale and yes. speed. Scale, yeah. I mean, I think speed is just a beneficiary. We never started this program Enough to be fast. fast. We didn't care about the speed. What we cared about was being the most predictable. So it had the highest value as an asset and the most predictability to pass through the pipeline. Okay. That's what was important to us. Speed just became a wonderful consequence that came out of that. And so, so what's the end game for you, for you guys? I mean, I know you're just starting out. You've yeah. just received your funding, yeah. and and it's unique how you're funded. Um, yeah. But so, so what's the what? Where's the the progression for the business? I guess for, yeah. for cellularity as a business. So, to be honest, with you, we're exploring it right now. Okay. There are compounds that we will take to market ourselves. 
there are compounds or I would say drugs. Let me rephrase that because it's not just small molecules. Okay. Uh, there are products that we may decide to partner with because maybe we just don't have the scale to run those clinical sure. trials and things like that. I'm actually quite interested to start having almost like a digital first approach to everything we do, which is kind of what we do now anyway. Yeah. You know, even the digital biology that we've built out, like we have these two environments. We have our wet lab, our vivarium, okay. and the solarium platform is our digital twin of everything we do, okay. you know, in the lab, right? So, and it's cool, you know, it's just good, good peeps. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is like, yeah. it's just so, so, such a, an amazing glimpse of how far things have come yeah. and also like of the future of like where, where all of the research and R&D in, in developing yeah. new drugs is, is going. So thank you so much. Well, I'll tell you, you know, what's been really refreshing at JPM these last couple of days is when we've spoken to big pharma partners uh, or potential partners, but they're not partners yet. Uh, Are they potential. terrified? No, they love it. Okay, cool. They're like, thank God you freed our minds. <laughs> Literally, Great. I had one woman yesterday who's a very senior person uh, in the industry, and she came and she said, so wait a second, are you telling me I can have a predictable franchise? That's it. I said, that's exactly what I'm telling you. And I showed her one very cheeky map that we developed where it was a particular disease. Mm -hmm. We did the, the solarity map, if you will. So we have these solarity maps, but they're more like digital guides, if okay. you will. And I said, well, here's where your company is. And do you notice all the green space that you've left out? So that's our IP. Oh, geez. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> she was like, wait, wait, wait. Wait a wait, minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you breaking hearts and stealing IP uh, here at JP Morgan. Well, I love it. <laughs> well, it was just, no, it was simply just to highlight the fact that, look, it's not our fault. We've been trained as scientists to just, truly understand, yeah. the, you know, real discrete molecular components. And that's important. Yeah. I'm not denying that. And, you, and the FDA still requires that. So I'm not saying that we, we don't do that. But our, our initial approach is to say, let's look at the entire thing to see where the off-target effects are. What's a positive off-target? What's a negative off-target? Let's look at where co-regulation of pathways, right? Sometimes you want things to go up. Sometimes you want things to go down. Or sometimes you just want to change cells entirely yeah. from muscle tissue to brain tissue, which we know how to do. Right. So when you do these kinds of things, it's just such remarkable science. I had there was a friend yesterday. He said, dude, he said, like, it's Christopher Nolan movie, man. And I'm like, yeah, I said, as long as it's not Michael Bay, because we're not blowing things up. You know? <laughs> but, you know, but yeah, it's a really cool science story. And we just think this science is so remarkable. And we just we're living in a really fortunate time that single cell has come around. And that's given us the molecular resolution to truly understand disease at its most discrete functional living unit, which is the cell. But now to be able to expand that and say, how can we understand the full body as a result of that? My friend, the mad scientist. I love it. No. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Milan, thank you so much for dropping by you and for explaining this concept to us. It's, it's mind-blowing. It really thank is. You. I love it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. Thank you for joining us.